everyone, Bethany here and welcome to my channel. Today I will be working with TaylorMade Cards for You Digital Kit and it is a fun Halloween theme inspired kit. I resized a few of the ephemera and printed them out on 65 pound cardstock. This is the Roses and Rust Digital Kit, which I will have the link down below for. And then this last sheet, I actually did something a little bit different. I printed out on my laser printer, so we're going to play around with that. I'm going to go ahead and cut down some of these, and we're just going to go ahead and play. As stated before, I have this piece of the digital kit. I blew up the paper, and I printed it on my toner paper. So the one thing when you're doing toner foiling, know that your darker toner or your darker full coverage toner will work best. Um, things like a little bit grayer stuff is not going to pick up. Your foil will not pick up with heat very well with that. So you have to know that you're going to end up with more of a distressed look, a muddled look. Um, but you'll at least know in advance what it's going to do. This idea I have in my head may or may not work, which is okay. I have these three pieces of heat resistant tape just to give it a placeholder and I'm going to go ahead and put those down as well. And apologies because I have been having issues with my microphone apparently and so I'm going to have to find a replacement. But I am using a pumpkin colored foil for this first part but I will also be using a purple colored foil as well over the flower area and I'm just going to run both through the laminator a couple of times I'm also going to bray it down with a bone folder um, my camera and mic were not working when I was doing that at least they weren't clear so I'm not going to show you that today but I'm going to just talk you through what I did instead I should have done a fuller sheet of each of the foils but because I was trying to get more purple on the flowers I didn't do that which is okay it was a learning experience for me but the end result was still what I wanted so I made it work and you can see up close how where there are darker parts of the toner it picked up better versus the lighter parts of the toner but overall I'm really happy with how it turned out so now I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to the sizes I'm looking for for my preference so what I like to do when I foiled something is I like to add because all of the foiling happens generally on when I do it on white cardstock so what I like to do is I like to grab a color and blend some color in. The color I'm going to use is a Color Hive Purple Rain. It is smooshable, so I am going to just put a little bit there, then add a spritz of water. Because I want this color to blend down, I don't want it to be super heavy on the cardstock. So I am just going to bring a little bit a hint of that purple in and I can just add a little more color as needed but it's just offering that hint of purple right where those diamonds are and a little bit into where the webbing is So when you are not a fan of that stark black and white look, you could either foil on color cardstock, or like me, you just grab the white and then decide what your color blending is going to be later. I'm going to add one last little bit and call it a day. I'm 
Now I am going to keep this one simple because I think it's gorgeous as it is and I am just going to glue it directly onto the card base. I'm not going to have any type of outline. I'm using my Barely Art glue again and this is cut down to the same size as the card base. So the card front will completely cover that card base and there's the finished product for card number one. So for card number two, I have played around with the ephemera I cut out and I decided that these are the ones I want to put together. I'm going to add a little bit of shadowing. First I have the color high fog, which is kind of a grayer brown. And I'm just going to go ahead and sloppily add some to the edges just to give it a little bit of dimension. Sometimes when you print on white cardstock for digital kits, um, when you cut the cardstock, you'll see that white come through. And so I'm just dulling down that white. And I'm also adding just some splotches right here, right where those butterfly wings are. It's a great color to add. Adding a little bit of dimension. I'm going to add the color high frappe to the edge of this one. It's a little more orangey. And since I picked a Sedona orange from Maple Forte's cardstock, it's 110 pound. I want to bring a little bit of orange into some of this ephemera to help it pop off the page a little bit as well. And I'm going to use the flat white for the poison since I don't need something super poppy, but I want to give a little bit of shadowing here. And I'm just going to dip it right into that spongy pad. I like these inks because the sponge, it's a silicone sponge and it has a lot more bounce than other pads. So when you do techniques like this, it responds a lot better in my opinion. And now I am just going to go ahead and assemble the card. So I'm going to first assemble my layering. These are cut to the same size on the width, but the length I have slightly different. So we're going to make it pop there. I'm not married to the, it needs to have the same length all the way around look. It's cute, but it's not my look. Not saying I never use that look. Just don't gravitate to it all the time. All right. And then this is going to be a little more in the middle. And then I'm going to pop both of these up on foam tape. And I don't want to cut too much of that butterfly off, so I'm going to leave this more up here. Because that butterfly does kind of become its own ephemera. Now I'm just going to put it onto the card base. And this is slightly larger than an A2 size. It's not quite an A7 size. And there you have your second card. For this next look, I took the ephemera that is basically a seed packet, and what you do is you want to fold right around where the crease is, and I'm going to take a bone folder and just crease it down. Same thing back here, bone folder and crease it down, and the base. And then I'm going to go ahead and assemb assemble. So putting glue here on the inside first. And I'm not going to do a super huge amount of glue because I want it to be a little more flexible. If it starts leaving the paper later, I will add more as needed. But this is going to be reinforced by being put on a card base. But this will be a nice little treat packet, so you can add a treat. But I am also going to put this poison here. So I'm going to add the purple rain as an outline to tie in with the purple flowers on the packet here. I purposely left a little bit of white space just to add that color without detracting from the actual printed design. 
<clears throat> and now I'm just going to go ahead, before it even dries, because I'm being impatient, I'm going to go ahead and just glue it right away, right there. There's a lighter part of the text, so it fits perfectly. And I'm going to purposely grab some of that ink with my finger and just put a little bit of splotches right there. And this one will be another one that is easy to assemble. So I'm just going to add glue to the backing of that packet. And I'm going to place it a little crooked. And then it can go on the card base immediately. Because the look I am going for after is going to distress everything here. Now I have the Simon Hurley stencil. It is dots. It calls it tiny circles. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it over the entire design and grabbing my shooting star lunar paste I'm going to just add a little bit to the look. It's kind of a golden mustard yellow. But I am going to take my little spatula and scrape some right on over, mostly on the edges. And what it's creating is these little half moons and moons around the packet. And it's just this added extra texture. I didn't have to do it. I could have kept it cutesy, but I wanted to add a little bit of shimmer and a subtle glam to the look. And there we go. We have all these different half moons and I'm going to let it go sit and dry and start working on the next one. So for this next look I had this brilliant idea to try the lunar paste again um, using the bee sting with another stencil and I'm going to fast forward through it because I did not keep the look so the technique really is not something worth sharing. Also I was having troubles with my mic again but in a nutshell, I tried to use this flourish looking stencil and did a nice light layer of the bee sting around the edges again because I was just trying to get that vignette look and it really just wasn't working for me. So I took it off and I started just playing with how I could fix it and basically what ended up happening was I just scraped it and made it look like blood smears and splatters. I could have, if I thought about it a little bit more, I could have done the scrapes in different directions to look a little more like blood, but I ended up using some of the lunar paste on the edge of the ephemera as well, and that actually looked like pooled blood. So the effect that I was going for did not work out, but I feel like my rebound wasn't half bad. Sometimes that happens when you're working with different textures the idea that you have in your head may not be the idea that comes out on paper. So this is just a keep going with it encouragement. I'm going to go ahead and quickly get everything off of here. But before I do that, I'm going to use this little tag and grab a little bit of the red blood off the stencil. Trying not to waste, but it gives the same effect that I can do with the ink pad I'm doing with the lunar paste instead. So same thing here. This one I'm actually going to just drag the whole thing through the blood. Especially because there were white parts that I was either going to ink blend or do this for. So. This adds that little bit of dimension. To the ephemera here. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and clean up my space before I start my next step. For this tag, I have this little tiny piece of ephemera and I want, instead of poison, I'm going to actually hand write caution. And then eventually, I don't have, I could not find, let me rephrase, I could not find my hole punch, so I have to go digging to find it, but eventually I'm going to put this, a hole punch and 
use this tag with some string. But for now, we're going to create the base of the tag. And since the ephemera goes a little bit off the tag, I'm just going to go ahead and only glue towards the middle. And the caution will be popped up on foam tape. And as soon as I find my hole punch, I will go ahead and put twine, actually. I like that look. And you can add it to a piece of candy. Now I'm going to go ahead and assemble this final card together. So honest moment for you here. These are my first official Halloween cards. I have maybe a skull and crossbones stencil and I have a spider stencil as well. But I really don't have any stamp sets that have anything to do with Halloween. I just, my children are too young and I never really had a need for any of them. So I will definitely be looking out for what my style is for Halloween. I enjoyed working and playing with this kit. And I am placing this ephemera a little bit lower so that you can see the skull from the backdrop. And there you go. There is the final card. And here are the final results. The foiled card front that I kept super simple. The simple distressed card with probably, I think, the most ephemera that I used on any of the cards. And then we have the third card, which I used the lunar paste to make these different sized moons, half moons, with the little packet for your candy. And this blood splattered look that was a nice recovery from what I was going for. And then finally we have the blood splattered tag as well. So leave a comment down below. Let me know which one of these you really like the best. I may do a giveaway of one of these from one of the comments. So let me know which one is your favorite. Also, I would invite you to check out the link for the TaylorMade card for you. And also to continue in the hop, I will have the next person in the description down below. I hope you enjoyed today's fun playing with this gothic Halloween kit. And don't forget to check out the links to my store. My mom and I have a fall collection and a huge beginning of the fall sale just in time for Christmas shopping. I will have affiliate links down below. So if you shop the same place as I do, please use those links to support me and my channel. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Don't forget to find the joy in your day and happy making. Bye. Hi, Ellie. What's up, baby? Oh, did you stub your toe? Are you okay? Color I have ink. <coughs> oh, man. Hold on. Pause. Child is having a conniption, and now she's magically all better. And there's a little baby who needs to eat. He's like, feed me, feed me. But I... You cleaner about this? You need to take a chill pill, lady. You're a little too excited. If I wanted to be cleaner about this... Ellie, Mommy's talking, honey. Alicia Nala, are you listening to Mama? Mommy's trying to talk. You want to talk too? Yeah. Thank you for sharing, honey. It's very nice to share toys with Mommy. Do you need a snack? Is that why you're here? Usually you only come visit Mama when you need a snack these days. I want a snack. Yeah, see, I knew. You're happy birthday to you. Oh, you're singing happy birthday? Whose birthday is it? No. No, you're not going to sing happy birthday? Yeah. Now you're in Mommy's zone. Please stop touching Mommy's oh, computer. No. Honey, it's very difficult to talk when you're making all this noise.